In today's uncertain times, nations are more divided and the international organizations responsible for global peace and security are at their most fragile. What role does Africa play in the complicated world of global politics and how can it influence global decisions? The answer might lie in strengthening multilateralism, something countries have been trying to get right since the Second World War. For multilateralism to work, states rely on diplomacy, compromise and bargaining. Global bodies such as the United Nations and African Union are there to provide unity in dealing with the world's most difficult problems. Of course, global politics is complex and the UN and its Security Council haven't achieved their goals for international peace and security in all cases. In the 1990s, after the Rwandan genocide and the conflict in Somalia, it was clear that the UN was not always able or willing to act. These experiences showed that multilateralism may be the best way for Africa to solve its problems. And so the African Union, or AU, was created in 2002 with one clear goal, African solutions to African challenges. For less powerful countries, many of them in Africa, multilateralism is a way to speak with one voice, to pool resources and increase influence. It means solving conflict by negotiation and not by force or the power of the strongest few. Multilateralism is also important to Africa because of how often the continent is the subject of global decisions. During 2020, African peace and security issues made up more than 70% of UN Security Council resolutions, making it the most discussed subject in the Council. No multilateral organization is perfect, but if bodies like the UN and AU are weak, Africa will have the most to lose. Somalia is a good example of this. Bringing peace to the country has been on the UN and AU agenda for over 30 years. But for the past 15 years, the Security Council has avoided sending troops and being involved on the ground. While the world watched, the AU sent peacekeepers to Somalia, one of the most challenging places to deploy in the world. Today, AMISOM, as the mission is called, is the largest peace operation globally, and it has been critical in ensuring a degree of stability in the country. Despite having played a crucial role in Somalia, the AU presence has also become a symbol of how dependent Africa is on outside support. The mission still needs financial and logistical support from the EU and UN. Now, the question is, when will the Somali government be able to take over from the AU? Helping countries deal with instability takes time and may be the most difficult task for multilateralism. When it fails, peace doesn't last and conflicts re-emerge. And sometimes, drawing other countries into African politics can make things worse, as we've seen in Libya. Libya has been one of the most controversial cases of multilateral involvement for the UN and the AU. In 2011, the Security Council approved a no-fly zone over Libya to protect civilians, but NATO forces were allowed into the country. The AU was against the resolution, but the three African countries in the Security Council voted for the no-fly zone. They later changed their positions and opposed the intervention. Although the Security Council's actions ended Gaddafi's dictatorship, the move was criticized for appearing to favor regime change over peace. Today, stability still hasn't returned to Libya. And although the AU wants a stronger role in the country, it struggles to compete with other Security Council members who have taken the lead in the peace process. As Africa pushes for more influence in global decisions, its position on the Security Council becomes key. So how does the Security Council work? Five permanent and 10 non-permanent states are elected for a term of two years. All members have one vote and resolutions pass when they reach at least nine votes. If any of the five permanent members vote against a resolution, 
the resolution fails. This means that the Permanent Five have more power than other members. Security Council decisions are legally binding and all 193 member states are supposed to treat them as law. Africa holds only three of the 10 non-permanent seats. In the past, the three African members, or the A3 as they are commonly known, often voted separately and hardly spoke with one voice. In the past two years, they've worked together more frequently to influence decisions. By themselves, African countries have little say in the UN, but together they can set goals, negotiate with confidence, and even break political deadlocks. Africa has learned that in global politics alone, one can go fast, but together countries can go far. The A3 can be more effective if they treat their role on the council as a relay race rather than a sprint. How else can African countries influence global politics? As South Africa passes the Security Council baton to Kenya, three lessons stand out. Behind the scenes, being a Security Council member involves a lot of paperwork and bureaucracy. Positions are drawn up almost every day, which requires getting approval for hundreds of discussions each year. And these positions have real consequences they shape the way the world deals with crises. Two years on the council is a short time. To make the most of it, countries must plan ahead so they can hit the ground running. South Africa learned this the hard way, taking a couple of months to develop systems and deploy staff, meaning the chance to influence some decisions was missed. South Africa avoided being tied to strict alliances which worked in its favor. In January 2019, South Africa sided with Russia and China on the Venezuela leadership issue, suggesting an alliance with other BRICS nations. But in April 2019, South Africa allied with Europe to oppose Russia, China and the US, who wanted to water down the language on a resolution on sexual violence in conflicts. South Africa's biggest win was in ensuring African unity. The A3 issued over 16 joint positions and statements in 2019, which had never been achieved before. Working together, African voices are stronger on the Security Council. It's difficult for members to oppose collective African positions, especially those relating to Africa itself. The world remains divided by competing interests and populist movements. Can a unified A3 help Africa have a lasting impact on multilateralism and world peace? Some believe that power is everything in international relations. Others see power in working together. If we want African solutions for African problems, then African countries must keep working toward common goals. This is where the continent's potential power lies.